But if you will, we've heard about the bear hawk, we see the bear hawk, but quite frankly, there's not a lot of folks out there really understand just what a phenomenal little aircraft this is. You finally built a Stoll 4 place that kind of fit a lot of the parameters that everybody's been asking for. Can you fill in the blanks? Well, one of the blanks is it's not truly a Stoll airplane. We don't, con what we consider it is it's, it's whatever you want it to be. Okay. The Stoll characteristics happen to be a happy byproduct of uh, aerodynamics and power and wing loading and all the normal factors. And yeah, it gets off incredibly quick. It lands incredibly quick. But in between that, it's just a good, healthy 150, 55 mile an hour four place airplane that can carry 11 to 1300 pounds of useful load. And that is in, in uh, at 6.6 G's, which is utility category, not normal category. Okay. So that means that we're hiding about 400 pounds. Mm -hmm of useful load if you put us on an equal footing with everybody else in the market. Right. So what it is, the kind of the way I look at this thing, Jim, is I look at this thing as if it's a uh, 32 Ford five window coupe. <laughs> okay. You can chop it, channel it, put a big Hemi in it, like this one's got a 250 in it and have an absolute barn burner. Gets off the ground before you're ready to get off of the ground. There's all that amazing stuff. Or you can put a nice little 160 in it, have a nice little cruiser that cruises at 130, 35 miles an hour. 180, you're going to have 140, 45 miles an hour. It can be anything you want it to be. Mm -hmm. It is a basic, clean, super well designed and an incredibly benign airframe. Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. So it's it's a do everything. It can be whatever you want it to be. Airplane. So that's it's. Uh, we've got not necessarily an image problem because it's such a good bush airplane that people fly and love it for that. But mm -hmm. it just does a bunch of other stuff. Does that answer it? Pretty much. How's it? What kind of builder is it though? What kind of a builder? Mm -hmm. The uh, now, if you were to go back and we've been doing this for seven years now, mm -hmm. uh, starting in 2000. If you were to track our take all of our spec sheets, all of our information, and put it side by side, mm -hmm. you would see numbers change. Okay. Now what was happening is at the beginning you're estimating mm -hmm. or guessing I guess you could say as a, as a what it's going to take to build it, what it's going to, what it's going to cost to build it. Mm -hmm. Now we've got enough guys out there that have done it who are just finishing up and we routinely stay in contact with them to find out what the real numbers are. And you would see our build times go from a thousand up to fifteen and then back down to twelve or thirteen hundred hours which seems to be the average number for the average guy. All right. The record so far is 850 hours, but that guy builds Super Cubs as a, as a hobby. Gotcha. And we got one that's going to fly next week or the week after that was built in 650 hours. However, that's kind of funny because the uh, the guy start, bought the kit to build it as a break from re restoring the Waco cabin that he's rebuilding. Uh, he's got 5,000 hours in this, so he blew through this thing like a <laughs> like an erector set. Okay. So 12 to 1400 hours is a very realistic number that we got from our builders. We didn't we didn't uh, invent that. Let's, let's talk a little bit about costs, because obviously anybody who's looking at an airplane is going to be concerned about costs. What's a kit go for at this point, and what is an average range? Of course, nobody can figure out all costs, but a range for a, a reasonable completion on a Fairhawk. Actually, I can give you an Excel spreadsheet okay. that, that gives you a, a low, an expected, and a high range. Okay. If, if anybody contacts us to, to buy this kit through the internet, one of the things they get is an Excel spreadsheet that shows what they're going to have tied up in the airplane when they're all done. Okay. And it is set up in such a way that all the changeable numbers are blue, and mm -hmm. the numbers you're not supposed to touch are black. Okay. So you can go in there and change. Well, I don't want to, I've, I've got, I already got an 0540 in my barn, and, right. and it's not going to, you know, so they can change it and have the numbers automatically roll out. The numbers will run from, from $47,000, including the kit. The kit is $35,500. That's the quick build kit. Okay. The only option you can buy on over and above that is the or the aux tanks for 500 bucks. So that means the most of your money I can take is $36,000. Okay. Today, there is an affordable, high performance, easy to own and easy to operate very light jet designed with you in mind. 
Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Outstanding. Well, it certainly is a cute looking little airplane. There's no question that you take a look at it, it's got a very conventional but very pleasing look to it. It's got what I call, I, I think it's kind of retro chic. <laughs> okay. You know, it's, it's, it's 1948, kind of the best of 1948 brought up to date. And, and we, we freely admit this airplane sets aeronautical engineering back about 60 years. You know, it's a ball peen hammer. Mm -hmm. And once you got a ball peen hammer, why try to improve on it? <laughs>